Hello, if you're new here, my name's Ed, your friendly neighborhood junior doctor, although this video, not so friendly because we're gonna be doing one of our rapid fight scene trauma diagnosis of the bus scene from Nobody. Loads of you recommended I check this out. The film was brilliant, but we're just gonna be breaking down that fight scene. Just be warned, it's pretty brutal. Three, two, one, fight. <laughs> Blunt force facial trauma from punches, elbows, even a wine bottle. High risk of fractures to the nose, the eye socket, cheekbones, jaw, maybe losing a few teeth too, and of course, a traumatic brain injury. Not to mention fractures to the hand, so-called boxers fractures if they're not used to punching properly. When this wine bottle smashes, we like to see lacerations or foreign bodies of glass embedded in either the head that it hit or the hand that was holding it. Penetrating injury, it's difficult to see quite where it is, but possibly the left renal angle. So we're gonna get bleeding from the skin and soft tissue. So things like the latissimus dorsi muscle. But the real worry is if this has gone much deeper, but thankfully there are many more muscles beneath this that might provide some protection. But if the knife has gone much deeper, we could be looking at a kidney laceration or even a lung injury, such as a pneumothorax or hemothorax, depending on what angle the knife has gone in. Oh my God, that is a freaking bullseye. Nasal fracture, pretty much guaranteed. And she is right to be shocked. A nasty hyperextension injury to the elbow. Your elbow doesn't bend at all in this direction. So if your arm is fixed in this position, the forearm pulled, at least we're gonna see some ligament damage and a dislocation. We need an x-ray to confirm this and rule out any fracture. Then the treatment would be a reduction, meaning putting it back in place, and then a splint followed by some physio. Blunt force trauma to the epigastric region, probably gonna experience what we call being winded, so pain and difficulty breathing from the resulting spasm of the diaphragm. As we predicted, textbook symptoms of being winded. He then pulls the knife out here, which is actually much more around the front, so in the lumbar region rather than around the back, like I thought before. So we'd be more concerned with bowel injury. And it's never a good idea to remove penetrating foreign bodies, but to hold them securely in place as the object may be the only thing plugging up the bleeding. But I'm guessing he's removing it, not for medical reasons, but for weapon reasons. Laceration to the forearm, likely superficial given the fairly slow mechanism, but there's lots of veins in this area, hence the bleeding. But much deeper and we worry about damage to the muscles and tendons that flex the wrist and flex the fingers, which would need surgical repair if ruptured. Three nasty strikes to the side of the head. The first two likely causing fracture of the zygomaxillary complex, so the cheek area. The last blow much more concerning as it's connecting with the temple where the skull is thin and there's an artery that runs close underneath the bone called the middle meningeal artery. If that is damaged, we could be dealing with an epidural hematoma, a life-threatening bleed on the brain. Penetrating injury to the anterior thigh. For sure we're gonna get bleeding from the quadriceps muscles, but most concerning would be if there's any damage to the femoral artery or vein, which are close to this area. Rupture these and you could bleed out within minutes. Hence, keeping the foreign body in place, compression to slow the bleeding and encourage clotting, and ideally a tourniquet on too. What the actual frick? He's just kicked a knife all the way through the leg. Anatomically, it looks like here, 
that the knife's gone directly through the femur, so the thigh bone. In reality, the knife would become embedded in the femur or glance off and go either side. But assuming that is what's happened, again, it's gonna be damage to the big blood vessels in the leg that are gonna be the main issue in the short term. And then we'd also wanna be wary of nerve damage to the sciatic nerve, which this looks to have gone straight through. Ligation attempt around this guy's neck, not quite long enough or enough force to knock out the carotids, but certainly enough to trigger the bus to stop at the next stop. Our hero, if you can call him that, goes head first through a window, head injury and likely scalp lacerations and foreign bodies from those glass fragments. We then have a nice little halftime team talk and a chance to catch our breath. Nose is broken. My teeth. And with this guy even doing the trauma diagnosis for me. And now we're back to it. Fight. Is it really a rapid fight scene trauma diagnosis without a penetrating chest trauma? You know it by now, likely hemoneumothorax. Deep laceration to the left bicep, possible brachial artery rupture. Right thigh penetrating trauma, possible superficial femoral artery and vein rupture. Another penetrating chest trauma, as we said before, likely hemoneumothorax. Significant traumatic brain injury here, causing loss of consciousness. Or attempted strangulation, so the force around the neck would be closing off the carotid arteries or compressing the airways. And luckily for this dude, it's let go before it would kill him. Definite fracture to the hand, but let's face it, that's the least of his worries. It's gonna be high risk for facial bone fracture or depressed skull fracture so we could be dealing with significant traumatic brain injury, like a brain contusion or a bleed on the brain. And to make things even worse, something that could kill you even quicker, blunt force trauma to the anterior neck, likely laryngeal fracture, uncommon due to the flexibility of the cartilage, but if it does fracture, and that's a significant force, so I'm assuming it has, we're gonna get loss of structure and swelling and bleeding, all of which can occlude your airway and kill you within minutes. And let's just pause things there because that's exactly what we go on to see. Patient's upper airway has collapsed and he's unable to get air into his lungs. And so what do we see next? This is an emergency airway being inserted, what we call a cricothyroidotomy, not to be confused with a tracheotomy, which is much longer term and incision is made much lower. Now the anatomy here is bang on. We want to be going through the cricothyroid membrane and you can feel this on yourself. So first feel the big cartilage in the neck, that's the thyroid cartilage. And as you move down, there'll be a little gap and then a smaller cartilage, which is the cricoid cartilage. That small gap, that's what you want to be aiming for. That is the cricothyroid membrane. So an incision here will put you through the skin, through that membrane and directly into the trachea, the windpipe, and allow us to put a tube in and bypass the blockage in the upper airway. And that's where the reality stops. Although this area is chosen because there aren't many blood vessels, we'd expect a lot more blood than we see here. And it's certainly a lot more difficult to do than we see here. It's also super important that when you insert the tube, it's not just gonna fall out. So we should place it further than just the tip and we should try and secure it in place. As we see here, it looks like it could just fall out or be blown out by the patient. 
and you might think, well, it's easy to just put it back in. It's going to be very hard to put it back in with all the swelling and bleeding. All in all, he makes it look super easy, even under high pressure. Whereas in hospital, this is a very expert skill, even with all the gear. So a proper endotracheal tube with a cuff that's probably a little bit bigger too. But in this emergency, this is the best we can hope for. And so on to our kill count, none stable, one in serious condition. Four in critical condition and none dead at the scene. And our hero Hutch looks to be in stable condition. He's lucky to get away without any fractures. Looks like he's got some lacerations, some abrasions. He's going to need some stitches to that laceration on his abdomen. You'd really want to explore that to make sure it's not gone deeper. So there you have it, another rapid fight scene trauma diagnosis complete. As always, please send me any fight scenes from TV and film that you'd like me to give the fight scene treatment to. And if you've enjoyed this, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and maybe even check out some of the other fight scenes like my Ip Man fight scene or my Batman warehouse fight scene. They're both good uns. And it just leaves me to say thank you very much for watching. I hope you're all well, and I'll be back soon.